What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out a video from WrestleMania. Crazy WWE fan arrested and charged for attacking Seth Rollins, Randy Orton's daughter, and other wrestling news. Uh, if you guys seen on the main in the clutch page, we did check out the clip of just some crazed fan going rogue and a spearing the hell out of Seth Rollins before security and officials could take him away. Um, that was insane. It was wild. Like, I don't know what possessed this fan to do that. Like, I don't, I have no idea, but hey, man, that was not a smart move at all. If it's one thing I'm not a big fan of, and I think a lot of people are not a big fans of, is fans getting beside themselves, jumping the barricade and trying to hop in the ring with these wrestlers, man. Like, that's dangerous. That's dangerous for the fan. That's dangerous for the wrestlers. Like, that's that's not what's up, man. You go to the show, you pay your money to to watch people, you know, wrestling and entertain you, not to, you know what I'm saying, get, get involved in a situation where you can get hurt, the wrestler can get hurt. Like, it's 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 not what's up, man. I'm, I'm all for going rogue, but not that rogue. That's a little bit too much. So, yeah, we did check it out uh, last night. Right, kind of right after it happened, uh, people was uh, DM me, DMing me, and letting me know what was going on on Monday Night Raw. And apparently, there's another video clip of I think this was like maybe a dark segment uh, last night, uh, where a fan was getting a little bit rowdy, like in the front area, and they were it was like some type of lumberjack match. So I think it was a dark segment, it was a lumberjack match, and you know a fan was getting a little disrespectful with uh Sami Zayn or whatnot so you know it, it looked like he wanted to hop the barricade MVP was like please hop the barricade bro hop the barricade and he like they were you know what I'm saying they were wanting wanting him to hop that barricade because he was I guess getting kind of disrespectful I'm not sure but y'all was wild last night on Monday Night Raw I don't know what was going on I didn't even watch it but y'all going crazy man but Enough of, enough of the talking. Let's get right into this video. Appreciate all the love and support. And uh, let's do this thing. It is WrestleMania here, back with another video. The Survivor Series is over, but what will the fallout be on Raw? Well, join us now as we look at this week's edition of the Red Brand, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including a crazy WWE fan crazy. arrested and charged for attacking Seth Rollins, abysmal attendance at Raw, Damn. a WWE wrestler returned to the ring, Randy Orton celebrates with his daughter in the ring, and much more. Oh, Be sure okay. to subscribe cool. and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos, and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Now, as always, we won't recap the matches, but we'll just provide you with the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. And I'm willing to bet the downright ugly has something to do with the egg, from which I was telling me they were trying to find the egg at the beginning of the show. I... That gotta be in a downright ugly category. As always, we start off with the good as number one, Austin Theory's title match. Now, last night's title match between Theory and WWE Champion Big E was a great way to continue Theory's push and develop the ongoing rivalry between Big E, Seth Rollins, and Kevin Owens. Although Austin may seem like an unworthy contender, having Mr. McMahon grant him one on a whim certainly fits him with McMahon's mercurial character. Mm. Furthermore, Austin had a good performance. Biggie got a win back after losing to Roman Reigns at Survivor Series, and they developed the drama regarding Seth's quest for the belt and the question of whether KO is working with Rollins. Number two, Randy Riddle. Riddle took his hero worship of tag team partner Randy <laughs> yeah, to a new that. level last night when he donned a fake mustache and beard, along yeah. with a black vest to mirror Randy Orton. Riddle's backstage segment with Orton was another reminder of the absolute awesomeness of RK Bro. He talked like Orton, entered his match to Orton's music, and finished his opponent with an RKO. The WWE topped things off with Orton hitting Riddle's moves, the Bro Derek on Robert Roode, with the fans. Their pa their pairing is actually quite entertaining. It's always these odd pairings like this. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes these odd pairings work. Like you guys remember Team Hell No, Daniel Bryan and Kane. Originally, you didn't, you wouldn't think it would work, but it works. It was a funny tag team, and these guys are hilarious. But they can go in the ring, so I like this. I like funny, quirky tag teams like that. I can't believe I said the word quirky. What the hell? <laughs> Cheering the viper on. While this team is destined to break up, the WWE should milk it for all it's worth. Yeah. Number three, it. that old McMahon magic. And Vinnie Mac did it again on Raw, showing that he's lost the ability to entertain the fans with his Mr. McMahon character. As ridiculous as the storyline of McMahon searching for the thief of his $100 million egg was, the segment where Sami Zayn solved the mystery and revealed Austin Theory as a thief was kind of fun. 
Theory's hapless admission that things spun out of control when he tried to take a selfie with the egg fit in with his self-obsessed character, while Sami Zayn's weasel-like efforts to throw Theory under the bus were a reminder of how entertaining Zayn can actually be. Mr. McMahon's outrageous decision to give Theory the title shot and forgive him for stealing the egg because Theory reminded Vince of him fit McMahon's character to a T. Likewise, McMahon refusing to give Sammy a WWE Championship match despite him finding the egg makes sense when Vince admonished him that no one likes a snitch. Number 4, <laughs> Apollo vs Damien right. could be good. Apollo vs Damien could be one of the most promising programs in Raw in a long time. US Champion Damien Priest has already shown he has what it takes to eventually make the main event, having worked a major match at WrestleMania alongside Bad Bunny and throwing back the challenge of veteran performer Sheamus. Now it's time to see how the Archer of Infamy fares in facing Cruz, an opponent who has shown potential but who hasn't received a steady enough push. Apollo has shown that he can work well as a babyface or a heel mm. and a successful showing with Priest could help solidify both That's Cruz an and Priest uh, on Raw. Number 5, A Structured Show Last night, Raw accomplished something it rarely does, booking a structured show with matches, interviews and angles that seem to drive storylines rather than just fill 3 hours of TV time. Although Raw wasn't fantastic, it gave fans reason for staying tuned whether it was the show's matches, the angles such as Seth Rollins laying out Finn Balor and Liv Morgan slugging Becky Lynch, or the promos. And number 6, a good build up for Seth vs Biggie. The WWE is doing wonderful work building things up for Biggie vs Seth Rollins. Yeah, that's obviously going to be the next potent, uh, next big few for Big E. The WWE has no pay-per-view scheduled until 1st January 2022, mm -hmm. so it needs to bide its time with a big money match between Seth and Big E. The yep. WWE continues amping the anticipation for the eventual showdown between the two while it carefully avoids booking them in any matches. Yes. While fans will likely see a non-decisive match on Raw sometime soon, they are smart in using skirmishes between Seth and Big E to whet the fans' appetite. But that was good, what about the bad? It's oh number boy. one terrible tag team scene. Last night's women's tag team title win by Carmella and Queen Zelina over Rhea Ripley and Nikki Ash was another painful reminder of how terrible the women's tag team division oh, is. Man. Although Ripley and Ash were a good team, they haven't spent much time in developing their act or booking them against anyone. While the tag team titles may be a good way to utilize Carmella and Zelina, none of whom are standout singles wrestlers, could be tough to pull off unless the WWE creates new teams. Number two, yeah, Becky destroyed. They need to definitely get rid of that. <laughs> they need to get rid of those damn belts, bro, because it's just not enough women in a division for them to even have it, to be honest, unless they combine the women's division. But yeah, they just need to go ahead and do away with them belts. Joy's Liv Morgan on the mic. Huh. The WWE is taking a major risk with Becky Lynch's promos against Liv Morgan. While it's only natural for a heel to run down a babyface, Lynch is going overboard in pointing out Liv Morgan's very real record of failure, something which is a result of WWE booking her inconsistently. Damn. The biggest problem here is that Liv will look even worse if she loses to Lynch. Number 3, Off. Here's the thing about that too, if they're going to book her in that situation, you gotta, at some point, you gotta give Liv Morgan the rub and put the strap on her. If you're booking her like this, there's no point of booking her in a situation where, you know, Becky Lynch is pretty much downplaying her like she's not even worth her time, blase, blase, only for her to ultimately be right and Liv Morgan doesn't get the shot. Because a lot of people are fans of Liv Morgan. So, I don't know. It'll be something different if they do it correctly. But, once again, we're talking about WWE here. Full egg mystery. Now, the mystery of Mr. McMahon's missing egg could be one of the stupidest angles of 2021. Yeah, the very idea of McMahon carrying a $100 million jeweled egg with him was bad mm. enough, but the search for the egg's thief and the revelation that Austin Theory stole it after his plan to take a selfie went awry likely had fans' heads exploding. But two things are clear. Number one, the WWE's latest cash grab for promoting a movie shows they don't care about how such a marketing ploy affects the product. Yeah. And number two, it's clearly a storyline Vince either wrote or he couldn't wait to get involved with as it suits his craving for corny storylines. That's super Number four, corny. Finn finished? What's going on with Finn Balor? The former Universal Champion has gone from hero to zero within a matter of weeks following yep. his move to Raw. Balor, who just challenged Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship at Extreme Rules, now looks as competitive as a cardiac patient trying to run a marathon. Yeah. Okay, well, that might be a bit of a stretch, but it's clear that Balor is entrenched in the role of chronic contender, someone who makes a good showing in the title and shots tournament, but fails to get the brass ring. Another example is Balor serving as Seth Rollins' personal punching bag on Raw, an incident fans can be sure won't lead to Finn getting any kind of payback. Balor is too talented to have him serving yeah. in a mid-card role, but apparently the WWE feels that's the best use for him. 
Now, luckily, there was nothing down. That, that sucks. <laughs> like, Finn definitely deserves so much better, man. It, it's just he's... Ah, man. I... Uh, it just sucks because you have such a talented individual who was flourishing when they went back to NXT. Kind of had some momentum when they came back to SmackDown. Lost to Roman Reigns, which we most of us expected. Then goes to Raw, hoping better opportunities to only be back in the same position downright ugly about last night's Raw. They did a good job following up on the Survivor Series, including Seth Rollins' big win, the men's elimination match, and Becky Lynch's triumph over Charlotte. The show didn't seem like it was booked on the fly, which is a major accomplishment in its own for the red brand. What did you guys think of Raw last night? Didn't watch now, it. let's move on to- what, y'all think, what, y'all, what did y'all think of Raw last night? The news. First news, it looks at a crazy WWE fan this arrested and charged for attacking Seth Rollins. But topping the news today is the attack on Seth Rollins at last night's Raw. Now, in case you missed it, Rollins was on the way to the ring when a male fan, now identified as 24-year-old Elisa Spencer, attacked Rollins from Come behind. On, ESPN's Mark Raimondi tweeted, Elisa Spencer, 24, has been charged with attempted assault and attempted violation of arts and cultural affairs, disrupting live sporting event for Damn. his attack on WWE wrestler Seth Rollins during the Raw television show Monday night at Barclays Center in Brooklyn, per the NYPD. Ramondi elaborated, per police, Rollins suffered swelling to his lip but refused medical attention. A photo Damn. from Twitter account, A Kenny for Your Thoughts, shows Becky Lynch watching Seth from gorilla position as Big Time Bex was undoubtedly concerned about her husband being yeah. attacked. The WWE released a statement following the alleged assault saying, WWE takes the safety of its performers very seriously. Mm -hmm. The individual who attacked Seth Rollins has been turned over to the NYPD and will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. TMC Sports reports the man has been hit with three criminal charges, attempted assault, attempted violation of arts and cultural affairs, and disrupting a live sporting event. According to TMZ, the defendant is due in court sometime in December for a hearing regarding the matter. Whilst there was that crazy fan who attacked Seth Rollins, another person was actually... See, and this is uh, what I was talking about as well. They got into it with Sami Zayn. ...the ejected from Raw as well. Dang. Alex McCarthy tweeted, More wind is from the crowd as a guy in the blue gets ejected. No idea what was said, but Montez Ford waved him off with both MVP and Sami Zayn getting animated. Now, coincidentally, the Barclays Center was the mm-hmm. same location where Bret Hart was attacked during the 2019 Hall of Fame ceremony by an audience member. Next up, was The Rock actually scheduled for Survivor Series? Our fans who watched the 2021 Survivor Series are still wondering why they don't. Hey, man. Like I said at the beginning of this video, y'all. Go to the shows. Enjoy the shows. Don't be trying to be some, some crazed individual. Get your 15 seconds of fame by attacking someone. Hop in the barricade. It's the quickest way to jail. Quickest way to get fined. And it's the quickest way for you to get hurt. So just chill. Enjoy the show, man. WWE spent so much time celebrating The Rock's 25th anniversary of his debut at the 96 Survivor Series, only without the great one appearing. According to a report from Andrew Zarian, Sunday's WWE Survivor Series was originally supposed to feature Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and for anyone watching last night, it was blatantly obvious that was the plan. In July, I was told that the Brooklyn, New York pay-per-view would be centered around Johnson. As fans know, there was no way for Johnson to appear since he was due to film his latest project. Zarian added, Yet another source informed me that there were hopes for Johnson to be on Monday's Raw dependent on his schedule. I personally didn't see this as happening. In late September, the same source told me that Johnson would not be on Survivor Series due to his filming schedule and needed to quarantine for travel. However, there was still a financial obligation to continue with the plan for the movie production without Johnson, which is what we saw last night. The basic concept stayed the same, minus Johnson himself. The WWE even had Mr. McMahon drop The Rock's name during a backstage mm-hmm. segment with Roman Reigns, a move which certainly set things up for a future showdown between the two. But all it did was want us to see The Rock at Survivor Series. Yeah. Next up, Bray Wyatt. That, that whole segment m- hyped us up to want us to see The Rock. Whether they was going to advertise it, whether they actually advertise it or not, you teasing it, it does kind of give the fans this expectation of, Oh, maybe he is going to tell me. It, it just, it automatically gives you that, that type, type of excitement when you keep talking about it, when you keep teasing it, when you keep having these backstage segments. So, you know, I get some people can say, oh, WWE didn't say he was going to come, 
but teasing it all the time doesn't help either. Because now you, you're you setting up your fans for unrealistic expectations that you know it's not going to happen. You might as well just not tease it like that. Like, that's just my personal opinion on it. Wyatt's first post-WWE appearance, a fans of Wyndham Rotunda, aka former superstar Bray Wyatt, will finally get a chance to see him at WrestleCon, who tweeted a picture of Bray Wyatt with the caption, We let him in Dallas. It should prove interesting oh, whether wow. Rotunda discusses his time in the WWE when he appears at the wrestling convention. Oh, that's cool. Next up, poor Raw attendance. Uh -oh. A recent photo uploaded to Twitter suggests the Raw after Survivor Series had more than a few empty Damn. seats. While it's difficult to gauge a show's attendance, both due to promotion sometimes giving away free tickets and because photos of an event can be deceptive, it looked like last night's Raw at the Barclays Center was anything but a sellout. Damn. Next up, a former WWE star returning to wrestling. Is former WWE superstar Summer Rae, aka Danielle Monet, returning to wrestling? Well, Rae, who last worked in the WWE in 2017, had fans talking after a report from PW Insider. Daniel Monet, the former Summer Rae in WWE, was spotted at the Impact Wrestling tapings this week. No word yet on whether she was starting with the company or just visiting. Would you guys like to see Rae return to wrestling? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm pretty sure there's probably some Summer Rae fans, but I don't I don't know anybody who's like, oh, yes, Summer Rae, she's back. I don't know. I could be wrong. Let me know if you're excited about that. Comments well. down below. <laughs> and finally, Randy Orton's daughter celebrates birthday with the fans. And last but not least, Randy Orton let the fans share a special moment with his daughter, Brooklyn, when he invited them to sing happy birthday oh, to wow. her after he brought her into the ring. BT Sports tweeted video of the heartwarming moment that saw fans in the Barclays Center singing to Orton's five-year-old daughter awesome. while a group of baby faces joined Randy and Brooklyn in the ring. But there you have it, dope. folks. That's Our cool, review man. of Raw, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need that to know. Is cool, Be sure man. to leave I a like comments down below. Heartfelt moments with wrestlers and fans, and you know they they invite them into their lives, you know, introduce them to their families. I think that's pretty cool. So, but yeah, man. Last night's Monday Night Raw, outside of the uh, the fans going rogue on boys, man, uh, that. That's probably the most exciting thing that probably happened on Raw. <laughs> Just the fans legitimately going rogue. But comment down below. Let me know. Are you guys um, looking forward to um, the potential feud with Big E and uh, Seth Rollins? I know that's that's the thing they're kind of setting up right now. So I want to know if you guys are looking forward to that. Or are you guys interested in that? You know, uh, I think they could possibly have a fantastic match. Just depends on how they book you. They have plenty of time until the actual next pay per view, which won't be until next year. So they can really take their time with this build and make it seem really important. I hope they do because I want Biggie to have a a decent title run where he's going against some formidable former champions, and I hope he's able to, you know, saying really build up his his title run from this. You know, I, I think. This is something that he needs. He needs a competitive title run. He needs competitive heels that's going to push him that to the edge of, you know, being even better. So comment down below. Let me know if you guys are looking forward to that uh, next WWE Championship feud. Appreciate all love and support. Road to 70K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.